This video is for section 6.6. .6. This is the final section of chapter 6, and we are going to be discussing what systems of linear inequalities are. Our goals are that we can solve systems of linear inequalities by graphing, as well as modeling real-world situations using system of systems of linear inequalities. So first of all, let's talk about what a system of linear inequalities is. It's definitely a mouthful when you say it. Uh, it means two or more linear inequalities using the same variables. So this chapter we have been focusing on more than one equation, and today we're going to be focusing on more than one in inequality. So you can see there's an example right here. And this is, I believe this actually matches up with the graph shown below. So now a solution of a system of linear inequalities is any ordered pair that makes all of the inequalities in the system true. So you can see in this picture to the bottom left of my screen, it's also on the top right of your paper, um, these solutions are in the shaded area. So wherever the two shaded areas overlap, that's where all the answers or solutions are. So let's take a look at our first example. What is the graph of this system? Y is less than 2x minus 3, as well as 2x plus y is greater than 2. So first of all, you would want to get two different colors right now. And let's focus on the first inequality. And let's just talk about a couple things that we know here. Um, it is going to be shaded below because of the less than symbol. And also, it's going to be a dashed boundary line because there is no line underneath the inequality symbol. The slope is 2 over 1, and the y-intercept is negative 3. So let's go ahead and plot that now. Negative 3 is the y-intercept. We're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, etc. And we're going to have a dashed line connecting. Remember, dash just means that the points on the actual line are not solutions. They are not included. And we're going to shade below. Now let's focus on the other inequality. I'm going to make this blue. And originally, it's not in slope-intercept form, so let's make it look like it. So we're going to subtract 2x to the other side, and we're, we're used to this. So y is greater than negative 2x plus 2. Let's talk about the details. We're going to be shading above because the greater than symbol. It's going to be a dashed boundary line because there's no line under the symbol. And a couple other things, the slope is negative 2 over 1, and the b is, the y-intercept is 2. So first of all, let's plot the b. The y-intercept is on the 2, on the y-axis, we're going down 2 over 1, that's the slope. Keep going, and connect with a dashed line. Make sure you put some arrows at the end. And lastly, we're going to shade above. When you shade in opposite directions and use different colors, it's obvious that the overlap is in the uh, right region right there. The red and blue region represents the solutions of both inequalities, and the solutions lie in the overlapped region. Now remember, we can check by plugging in a point, and we'll definitely want to choose a point that's in the shaded region of both inequalities. So I'd like to choose the point 3 comma 0, and I'll show you where that is. The way that we check our answer is we plug in the coordinate points for both inequalities. So let's take a look at the first one. We have, uh, let's see, 0 is less than... 2 times 3 minus 6, 3, and that is 0 is less than 6 minus 3. Is 0 less than 3? Yes, that works. Now let's check the other inequality. 
um, 2 times 2 times 3 plus 0 is greater than 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 is greater than 2. So as long as the point works for both inequalities, that is a check to make sure that you should it in the right region. Now we're ready to try number 2. This time we're given the graph and we need to write the system of inequalities. First of all, let's write the boundary line for the red line. Uh, as you can see, the line is going down, so that means it's going to be a negative slope. The y-intercept is at 3, 4, 5, 5. So the slope we need to figure out, and the b is 5. And now the slope goes down 1 over 2. That means we have negative 1 half for our slope, so let's put that together. Negative 1 half x plus b. The y is going to be on the other side. Now we have to figure out what kind of symbols going in the middle. Um, take a look. It's a dashed line, so that means there's going to be no line underneath the symbol, and it is shaded below. So that means we want to have a less than symbol. So the less than symbol goes right there. So our first inequality is y is less than negative one-half x plus five. The region does not include the line, only points below. So that's why we're using the less than symbol. Now let's take a look at the blue line. The blue line has a positive slope. As you can see, it's rising as you're going from left to right. The y-intercept is negative 1, as you can see right here on the graph. And starting at the y-intercept, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, the slope is just 1. So that means we're going to put that together, 1x minus 1. Now we have to figure out what symbol goes between. Uh, it is a solid line. So that means there will be a line underneath the inequality symbol. And also it is shaded above. And the way that you can tell where it's shaded is actually, um, you can see the green that's formed on the left side. So the blue is shaded above, so you can see the blue overall. And then the red was shaded below, and when you mix yellow and blue together you get green. So that's where that's coming from. And, hey, what symbol should we use? We should use a greater than or equal to symbol. So here's our second inequality. So to summarize this, the graph shows the intersection of the system of these two inequalities. So I'm going to write that down, and you can do as well. Now we're going to take a look at a real-life application problem. This one is a real-world situation. Sometimes real-world situations involve three or more restrictions. So that means we're going to have to write a system of at least three inequalities. So let's take a look at this one. You are planning on what to do after school. You can spend at most six hours daily practicing or playing bas basketball and doing homework. You want to spend less than two hours playing basketball. You must spend at least one and one half hours on homework. What is the graph showing how you can spend your time? So first and foremost, we should definitely define our variables. We're going to let x be the number of hours playing basketball and y be the number of hours doing homework. The first restriction that we have is that you can spend at most six hours of basketball and homework together. That means we're going to combine x and y by addition and we cannot go over 6. At most, 6 means we're going to have less than or equal to 6. Our second restriction is that you're going to play less than 2 hours of basketball. Since x is the variable dealing with hours of basketball, we're going to have x is less than 2. And our last inequality is going to deal with you need to spend at least 1.5 hours of homework. So that means we're going to have the inequality y is greater than or equal to 1 and 1 half. Because 1 and 1 half is the least amount of homework. Time for homework. Now we want to graph this system. Because time cannot be negative, the graph makes sense only in the first quadrant. So that's why our graph is in the first quadrant. So let's first graph the equation x plus y is less than or equal to 6. 
We are used to having it in slope intercept form, so I'm going to subtract the x to the other side, so I'll show you what I mean, if it'll let me. Okay, subtract x to the other side, that means we have y is less than or equal to negative 1x plus 6. First thing that we want to do is plot the 6 on the graph and go down 1 over 1 all the way to the bottom. Now this is going to be a solid boundary line because of the line underneath the symbol. So let's do that and then think about where we're going to shade. We're going to shade below because it's a less than or equal to symbol. So we're going to shade below now. Now let's create the inequality on the graph for the less than two hours basketball. I'm going to use a red color on the graph. Now remember, hoi vux, when the inequality or equation starts with an x, it's going to be a horizontal line that goes through that number. So Find two on the x-axis, and we are going to have a dashed line because there is no line underneath the less than symbol. So dashed vertical line. And now we are going to shade to the left because those are the numbers that are smaller than two. So we're going to shade to the left. Okay, and lastly, let's take a look at y is greater than or equal to 1 half. Again, we're using hoi vux. This time it's going to be a horizontal line going through 1 and a half or 1.5. So find 1.5 on the graph. And this is going to be a solid boundary line because there is a line underneath the symbol. So let's make a horizontal line going through 1 1 half. And last thing is we're going to shade above because the numbers that are bigger than 1 1 half are above 1 1 half. And shade above. Okay, as you can see, the overlap among them all is on the left center area. I will highlight it now so you can see. So this yellow area on your screen is the solution system, solutions of this system. So the solutions of this system are all the points in the shaded region, including the points on the solid boundary lines. Now I have a question for you. In closing, can the solutions of a system of linear inequalities be listed explicitly, like one by one? The answer to that question is no. The solution is a region on the coordinate plane, therefore the points cannot be listed, such as when we have equations, normally we can list the solutions of an equation, but inequalities don't work like that. So there you go. Today's lesson is complete. Please feel free to try 6.6 .6 lesson check. You can wait until we do problems like this together during class. Otherwise, you must do the 6.5 lesson check. I will be checking that when I check your notes. Have a good day.